from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, the 2020 European show of course happening virtually and that has put some unique challenges uh, for uh, the people running the show, really happy to welcome to the program. She is one of the co-chairs of this uh, event and she is also a principal software engineer at Splunk. Constance Karamanolis, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. All it's right. definitely so, so, an interesting time. All right, so Constance, you know, we know KubeCon, you know, it's a great community. Uh, you know, robust, everybody loves to get together. There's some really interesting, uh, you know, hallway conversations and so much going on. We've been watching, you know, the four or five years we've been doing the Cube at this show, you know, just huge explosion of, uh, you know, the, the breadth and depth of the content and of course, great people there. Uh, just if we could start with a little bit, you know, your background, as I mentioned, you're the co-chair, you also, you work for Splunk by way of an acquisition uh, of Omniscient. Uh, try saying that three times fast. Uh, and, uh, you know, Omniscient was, uh, you, you were telling me, is a company uh, that was bought uh, really before it came out of stealth. But uh, when it comes to the community itself, you know, how long have you been involved in this community? What kind of led you uh, to being co-chair? Yeah, um, I guess I've been involved with the community since 2017. So um, I was at Lyft before Omniscient Splunk, and I was lucky enough to be one of the first engineers um, on Envoy. You know, you might've heard of Envoy. Uh, sorry, I, I laughed at my own jokes. <laughs> um, but what I guess the thing that I, like my first exposure to KubeCon and CN the CNCF community was KubeCon Austin. And the thing that I was amazed by was, actually you said it, the hallway tracks, right? It's just, you know, I, was just see someone and be like, hey, like, I think I've seen your code review. Can I say hi? And that started, that got me at least a little bit involved in terms of talking to more people than they needed people. I would be, you know, work on a PR or in some of the community meetings. And that was my first exposure to the community. And so I was involved in Envoy, pretty actively involved in Envoy until from 2016 until mid 2018. And then I switched projects and turned a lift and did some other stuff. And I came back into CNCF community uh, in open telemetry as of last year, actually almost exactly a year ago now, to work on making tracing, I'm going to say useful. And the reason why I say useful is that usually people think of tracing as, you know, not as important as metrics and logs, but there is so much to tracing that we just we tend to undervalue. And that's why I got involved with open telemetry and admission because there's some really interesting ways that you could view tracing, use tracing, and you could answer a lot of questions that we have in our day to day. And so that's kind of right. that's how I got involved in the second round community and then ended up getting nominated to be on the co chair. And I obviously said yes because this is an amazing opportunity to meet more people and have more of that hallway track. All right, so definitely want to talk about open tracing, but let, let's talk about the event first. As, as, as we, yeah. were, we were talking about, you know, that community, uh, you always love, you know, the speakers when they finish a session, they get mobbed by people doing questions. When you walk through the expo hall, you, you go see people. So give us a little bit of insights as to, you know, how we're trying to, you know, replicate that experience, you know, make sure that there's, you know, I don't know, office hours for the speakers. Um, and just places uh, and spaces for people to, you know, connect and meet people. Yeah, um, so I will say that like, part of the challenge with KubeCon EU was that it had already been meant to be a per in-person event. And so we changing it to virtual isn't going to be as smooth as a KubeCon. Well, we have um, the China event that's happening in a few weeks or a Boston, right, that's still going on. Like those ones are being thought out a lot more as a proper virtual event. So there's a little bit of the awkwardness of, you know, now everything is going to be online, right? It's like you can't actually shake someone's hand um, in a hallway. But we are definitely trying to be cognizant of one, um, one in terms of future load, like probably less content, right? It's harder to sit in front of a screen and listen to everything. And so we know that we have a limited bandwidth. We are trying to find um, different pieces of software that, you know, allow for better Q&A, right? Exactly, like the mobbing after, after a session is, one as a speaker and one as an attendee is sometimes I think best part about conferences is you get to, you know, you might like someone might have said something like, hey, like this little tidbit, I need to ask you more questions about this. And, you know, so we're we're providing 
software to at least make that as smooth. I'm putting things in quotation, and as you'll be able to tell anyone who's watching, as I speak with my hands. <laughs> um, right, so we're trying to, we're definitely trying to provide software to at least, you know, make that initial interaction as smooth as possible, maybe as easy as possible. It, we know it's probably going to be a little bit bumpy just because maybe it's also the first time, like everyone, every conference is facing this issue. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how the conference software evolves. It is things that we've talked about in terms of maybe offering better office hours. Um, for that, it's still something that like, I don't know, it's, I think it's actually, I think it's going to be really just an open question for all of us is that how do we maintain that community? And I think maybe when we were talking, or I kind of when I was like planting the seed of a topic beforehand, it's like, and it's something I'm thinking about is like, how do we actually define community? Because so much of it has been defined of that hallway track or bumping into someone, right? It's like, and, you know, going to someone's booth and be like, you, you know, like asking that question there, because it is a lot more, less intimidating to ask something in person than it is to ask it online when everyone can see your question, right? I, I know I ask less questions online. Um, so I guess maybe one thing I want to say is that for, now that I'm thinking about it, is like, if you have a question, please ask questions, right? We are, you know, for certain, um, if a recording is done, if there's a recording for a talk, the speakers are usually going to be available online during the session, but afterwards, so please ask your questions when things come up, because that's going to be a really good way to at least still have a bit of that question there. Um, and also don't be shy, uh, please. If something is one, I guess, what, even when I say like, in terms of like, when it comes to review, code reviews, but if something's unintuitive, or let's say think about something else, like, interact with it say it or even you know ask that question on twitter if you're brave enough i wouldn't but i also don't barely use twitter uh yeah i don't know it's a big open question we don't, i don't i don't know what the community is going to look like and it's it's going to be harder yeah well one, one of the things it. i know every every time i go to the show conference is you know when the keynote when it's always like okay how many people is this your first time at the show and you look around and it's you know somewhere you know third or half people attending yeah. uh, our first time. I, I know, I'm trying to remember if it was, you know, a year and a half ago or so, there there was created uh, kind of a one-on-one track at the show to really help, you know, onboard and give yeah. people uh, into the show because, you know, it, it, when it, the show started out, it was like, okay, it was Kubernetes and a couple of other things. Now you've got the graduated, the incubated, you know, the dozens of sandbox uh, projects out there and then even more projects out there. So. You know, cloud native is, is quite a broad topic. There is no wrong way to, is where you can start. Um, and there's so many paths that you can go on. So uh, and, any tips or things that we're doing this time uh, to kind of help broaden and welcome in uh, the, the, those new participants? Yeah, so um, so there's two things. One is actually the one of our track is official for KubeCon EU. So we do have like, there's a few good talks in terms of like um, how to approach KubeCon. It was meant to originally be for in person, but at least helping people in terms of general terms, right? Because sometimes there's so much terminology that it feels like you need to carry, you know, a cloud native dictionary around with you. Uh, doing that and giving suggestions there. So that's one of the first talks that is going to be uh, able to watch on Coupon So I highly suggest that. Um, ooh, this is actually a really tough question because a lot of it would have been, like, I guess it would have been, for me, it would have been in person. It'd be like, don't be afraid to, like, you know, if you see someone that, you know, said something really interesting in a talk you attended, like, even if it's not after the question, just be like, hey, I thought what you s said was really cool. And I just want to say, I appreciate your work, like expressing that appreciation. And just, even if it isn't, you know, like the most thoughtful question in the world, just saying thank you, or, you know, I appreciate you is a really good way to open things up because the people who are speaking are just as, well, most people are probably just as scared of going up there and sharing their knowledge as probably you are of asking a question. So I think the main takeaway from that is don't be shy. Um, you know, like maybe do a nervous dance to get those jitters out. And then after, right? <laughs> and then ask that question or say like, thank you. It's really nice to meet you. Um, it's harder to have a virtual coffee. So hopefully they have their own teapot or, a or you know, coffee maker beside them, but offer to do that. Um, send an email. I think be a, one thing that is very common and I, I have a hard time with this is that it's easy to get overwhelmed with how much content there is. Or you said it, it's just like, at first still small and, you know, at least today, if you're only focusing on Kubernetes, especially like a few years ago, it was at least, you know, like maybe that there are a lot of people who are really advanced, but now that there's so many different people, like so many people from 
all range of expertise and this subject matter subject matter experts and interests that it's okay to be overwhelmed and just be like i need to take a step back because mentally attending like a few talks a day is like pro i feel like it's taking like several exams because there's so much information that's being bombarded at you and you're trying to process it so understand that you can't process it all in one day and that's okay come back to it right it's a great thing is that all these talks are recorded and so you can watch it another time uh and I would say probably just choose like three or four talks that you're really excited about and listen to those. Don't need to watch everything because as I said, we can't process it all and that's okay. And ask yeah, questions. So, so, so some, some, some great advice there because right, if we were there in person, it was always, you know, attend what you really want to see. Are there speakers you want to engage with because you can go back and watch on demand. That's been one of the great opportunities with uh, the, the virtual events is you can have access to on-demand, you can poke and prod. You know, personally, I love that a lot of them, you can adjust the speed of them. So um, if it's something that it's kind of an intro talk, I can crank it up to one and a half or two X speed and get through more content, or I can pause it, rewind if I'm not getting it. And the other opportunity is, I tell you the last two or three years, when I'm at an event, I try to just spend my time not looking at my phone, talking to people. But now there's the opportunity, hey, if I can be of help, if anybody in the community, has a question or wants to get connected to somebody. We know a lot of people. I'm easily reachable on Twitter, and you know I'm not sitting on a plane or in the middle of something that uh, being like. So th there is just a great, robust community out there uh, online, and we're great to be a part of it. Uh, so speaking of you know projects, you mentioned Open Telemetry, uh, which is what you know your your day job uh, works on. Uh, it's been a really you know, interesting topic, of course, for those that, that don't know the history, there were actually two projects that merged. It was uh, Open Tracing and Open Census uh, created yeah. Open Telemetry. Uh, so why don't you bring us up to speed as to you know, where we are uh, with, with the project uh, and, and what people should be looking at you know, at the show and throughout the rest of 2020. Open Telemetry is very exciting. We just did our first beta release. So for anyone who's been on the fence of you know, is open telemetry getting traction or is it something I should look at? This is a really great time to one, get involved in open telemetry and start looking uh, into it if it's as a viable project. But I guess I should probably take a step back of what is open telemetry. Open telemetry, um, as Stu mentioned, was the merging or the marriage of open tracing and open census, right? It was an acknowledgement that so many engineers were trying to solve the same problem. But as most of us knows, right, we are trying to say, solve the same problem, but we had two different implementations. And we actually ended up having an essentially a lot of waste of resources because we're all trying to say, solve the same problem, but then we're working on two different implementations. So that marriage was to address that because, right, it's like if you look at all of the major players, all of the players on Open Telemetry, right, they have a wide variety of, you know, vendor experience, right? Even as of speaking from the vendor hat, right? We do have a lot of, you know, we have to, vendors are really lucky that they get to work with so many customers and they get to see all these different use cases. Then there's also just so many actually end users who are using it and they have very peculiar use cases too that, you know, even with a wide set of other people, they're not going to necessarily have that. So open telemetry gets to merge all those different use cases into one, or I guess not into one, but like into, you know, a wide set of implementations, but at least it's maintained by a larger group instead of having two separate. And so the first goal was to unify tracing. Tracing is really far ahead in terms of implementation. A lot of several reference or several implementations of libraries like Go, Java, Python, Ruby. Uh, I'm blanking on other languages right now, um, but you know, quite a bit of the list there. And there's even a collector too, which some people might refer to as an agent, depending on what um, background they have. And so there's a lot of ways to one implement tracing and also metrics for your services, and also gather that data and manipulate it. Right? For example. Tracing, so I love tracing, right? It's like you can generate a lot of traces, but sometimes missing data. And like the collector is a really great place to add data to that. So going back to the state of open telemetry, open telemetry, since we just did a beta release, right? We're getting closer to GA. J is something that we're tracking for at some point this year. No dates yet, but it's something that we're really pushing towards. But we're starting to have a very stable ABI in terms of tracing. Uh, metric is on its way. Log is also something we're ramping up on. It is a really great opportunity to you know, all the different ways that we generate that, you know, we end up saying like service, service owners, applications, even business, right, that we're trying to collect data and to have visibility into our applications. This is a really great way to provide 
one common framework to generate all that data, to gather all that data and generate all that data. So it is really exciting. And I don't know, there's like, we just want more users. And why we say that is to the earlier point is that the more users that we have who are engaged with community, right? If you want to open an issue, have a question, if you want to send a, a PR, please do. Like we really want more community engagement. Um, it is a great time to do that because we are just starting to get traction, right? Like hopefully, I don't know, hopefully in a year or two, like we are one of those really big, you know, big projects right up on a CNCF, right? When KubeCon and it's like, you see how much has grown and you know, it's a great time to join and help influence a project and so many chances for ownership. Oh, I don't, it's really exciting. Excellent. We can talk about use well, cases another time. Uh, Constance, is really exciting. Yeah. And congratulations on the on the progress there. I'm sure everybody's you know looking forward to as you said, VA later this year. Uh, Want to give you the final word uh, yourself and Vicky Chung as the as the co chair for the event. Uh, what, what, what's, your, what's your real goal? What what do you hope the takeaway is uh, from you know this instance of the the 2020 European show? Uh, of course, virtual now instead of Amsterdam. Um. Is it, I guess like maybe that, I think that, I guess like two parts, one for the takeaway is that, you know, it's probably gonna be awkward, right? Especially going back to the community is that we don't have a lot of the in-person thing. So this will be an awkward interaction, but it's a really great place for us to want to assess what a community means to us and how we interact with the community. So I think it's going to be going into it with an open mindset of just knowing like, don't set the expectations like any other KubeCon because we just know it won't be, right? We can't even have, you know, the after, like the after hours, like going out for coffee or drinks and all stuff there. So having that there and being open to that being different. And then also if you have ideas, share it with us because we want to know how we can make it better. So expect that it's different, but it's still going to provide you with a lot of the content that you've been looking for. And we still want to make that as much of a welcoming experience for you. So know that we're doing our best and we're open to feedback and we're here for you. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Constance, thank you so much for, for, for the work that you and the team have been doing on. Uh, absolutely one of the events that we, we always look forward to. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, lots more coverage of theCUBE at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon Europe 2020. I'm Stu Miniman and thanks for watching.